You're listening to the Teach Better Talk podcast featuring expert educators eager to share progressive tactics to reach more students. Teach Better Talk is created by teachers and fueled by passion. Let's get started. Teach Better Talk. My name is Ray Hewart, and as always, I am with my sensational co-host, Mr. Jeffrey Gargus. Round of applause, everybody, please. There should be like a roaring crowd. Hi, Jeff. You really should. Yeah, there's no roaring crowd. Uh, there's a there's a hush over the crowd right now, and everyone just kind of like gasp because you said it's something very nice. Well, so, I didn't submit me... that word, so I just I shared a nice word. You, so <laughs> you didn't actually say it or mean it. You just shared it. I did mean that someone else told me to say it. So there you go. Uh, that was shared by our amazing guest who you get to hear from in just a little bit. Um, it was such a fun episode to record with Sean. And I think he gave me that word just to mess with me because he spent the entire episode talking about how he was really Team Ray. So I he think he right, just he to, right in before we even had play, and he was just like, "I'm just laying this down right now." Like he came in totally team Ray and on your side. Um, so it was a surprise I, when you, when you asked him about the word. I did not expect a, a good one, but I'll, I'll take it. So thanks, Sean. Appreciate you that. You know, it's really interesting because it's always fun. Like if a guest listens to the show, they come on and they kind of know all the inside jokes, and then we also get new friends that we build relationships with on the podcast who eventually at the end get to choose, you know, what team they're on. But it's been really fun. Have you been catching the tweets that Pav and Shay have been doing with um, me photoshopping my face into their photos? Yes, uh, Shay and Pav from Staff Room Podcast. Yeah, we, we're in a uh, the four of us have a, a Voxer conversation going on, and the, the one that like we spaced this out perfectly so Ray can fit in here. <laughs> so I know because so I don't really understand the whole piece, but they essentially take like four photos. And I think it's on Fridays yes. and people get to vote on what photo goes with their episode for the week. And um, they're always like super cute, kind of like off the cuff photos. Uh, but I was very honored that Pav was like, hey, Ray, the first photo, we specifically left a spot so you can Photoshop your face <laughs> in the picture. So this is my second week doing it. I think I need to start setting an alarm um, to make sure when that tweet goes out, I respond because holy cow, is that another fun duo that, <laughs> that does a lot of cool stuff and they get a lot of votes on that tweet. So, uh, very honored that they haven't yet used my face though. That's the only problem. Yeah, it's, that is a problem. It's been up for the running, but I haven't gotten, you know, the official picture. So we, we need, we need, uh, teach better talk listeners to go make sure that they're voting on that. And, uh, that what's the, their handles what at staff podcast i think uh and and make sure you vote on that we gotta get ray on there for one of their actual episodes i know especially good. if they're leaving space for me to photoshop myself in i mean i'm always in crazy poses i feel like i should be winning one of these weeks where they're like guess what even though ray's not on the podcast we're gonna include her face <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna include her face. Yep. Uh yes. Yeah. So Ray, I really want to get into this episode, but I want to talk about something we haven't really talked about this for a while. So I thought I'd bring it back up, if that's okay with you. Uh, yes. We do something every single week. We've been doing it for a while now, and it's great. I love it. It's one of my favorite parts of the week, honestly. Uh, that's our weekly administrator mastermind, which is every Tuesday, three o'clock Eastern time, two o'clock Central time. It's free. Go to uh, teachbetter.com slash mastermind. This is just a weekly get together mas mas mastermind where we get together, we we share some celebrations, we make connections, we uh, and then we try to tackle challenges or obstacles that, that people are facing together as a, as a group. Um, this is all administrators, uh, and it's it's really cool. It's a great group. We have a pretty consistent core group, and a lot of other people that jump in when they can because they can't always make it every week, but. I, I actually absolutely love this thing and I would really love to see it continue to grow because I think the connections that are being made in there amongst administrators who need uh, outside, you know, sounding boards and outside support people to lean on is so, so powerful that I really hope that uh, more people get in here and and uh, and learn and grow together with us in that group. So I really wanted to shout that out. Well, and I uh, do so want to say if you're listening right now, but you're not um, an administrator or not uh, carrying a leadership role in the unit office. It's a great thing to also like forward to your leadership. I mean, yes. I've seen teachers do that where they're like, 
hey, I thought this would be a fun resource. And don't, you know, you don't need to pressure anybody, but it really is a safe space to just bring up what's on your heart, what's on your mind, and try and find a solution. We provide a lot of different outlets for, for classroom teachers in this space, and we really wanted to create a, an outlet for our, our leaderships, at, you know, people as well. So if you're listening to this now and you think that your, you know, leadership in the building that you're in or in the district that you're in would just appreciate kind of collaborating with a, a positive sounding board to find some solutions, just send them the information. Cause like Jeff said, like Jeff said, it's every single week and you don't have to commit to every single week. It's just an optional safe space to talk shop. Yes. Oh, I love it. So that's at teachbetter.com slash mastermind. You can get in there again. It's free, uh, getting signed up. We'll just make sure that we get you the link every week so you can get in there. So, uh, really pumped about that. I love that. Uh, so talk about this episode. We already mentioned how much fun this was, how much, uh, what a good time we had with Sean. Uh, Sean Peck is an assistant principal out in, in a high school out in Minnesota. Uh, and just a fun guy. Uh, good dude. Actually just got uh, nominated and then awarded or selected as the uh, Southeast Minnesota assistant principal of the year. Uh, so that makes him a finalist for the, for the for the actual of the state which they don't decide for a while so that's super cool so congrats to sean for that um it was great having him on uh so much that he talked about that i really love but i love the advice that he gave uh for teachers i'm going to leave it there but that advice led him into talking about something that i just love the way he talked about it was achieving teacher immortality uh and uh his stories of his failure were so just like he called it a gut punch and really did it kind of hit you right in the heart. I loved it. He got super vulnerable with us and I really, really appreciate that. Ray, anything you want to pull out other than the fact that he's a massive team Ray guy? Yeah, I'm a huge fan of Sean. Make sure you connect with him. This is a great educator doing really great stuff in this space and this should not just be the end. This is the beginning, friends. This is the beginning. Yes. All right, let's get into episode 192 with Sean Peck. We'll be getting right back to this podcast episode, but really quick, I want to give a special shout out to any leaders in schools. If you are a district leader, a school building leader in any capacity, the Teach Better team has a weekly administrative mastermind, which actually welcomes in district leaders from around the world to come together and collaborate. There is no better time than right now to make sure that you are considering all factors and sharing resources with educators around the country and around the world. This is an amazing get together that happens every single Tuesday at two o'clock central, three o'clock Eastern. And if you have any sort of leadership role, consider this your invitation. You can get the private link to make sure that you're part of this weekly get together over at teachbetter.com slash mastermind. All right, leaders, we'll see you there, but let's get back to this episode. All right, we are here and we are chatting with Sean Peck and Sean, uh, we're already laughing. We're already having a good time. You and team have already, or you and Ray have already teamed up on me. So like, we already know where this episode's going, but we're uh, seriously, we're having a good time. Um, and, and chat with you. I'm super excited to kind of learn about you more, dig into your story, hear more about what's going on, how you, how you guys are doing out there in Minnesota. But before we get too far in, how are you feeling right now? Well, I, I feel great, honestly, and I really want to thank both of you for having me. This is a, a real treat for me. I do listen to the podcast, and I'm a big fan of the work that you're doing. So getting a, a chance to kind of talk to all the teachers and educators out there and just share just a little bit about what we got going on here in southeastern Minnesota, it, it's pretty cool. But we're right in the heart of summer vacation. Uh, it's honestly, you know, for a lot of us, it's been kind of a strange summer vacation, uh, certainly not as laid back as as what is typical with all the uh, planning that's coming up for the fall and all the confusion and, and kind of just wading through all the all the decision making that has to happen. But uh, getting a little bit of time off to enjoy some family stuff and uh, and taking a little break from it all. Oh, well, we're so excited you're here and very glad that you are Team Ray and you understand how all this is going to go uh, from since the very beginning. We've been talking even before we hit record. So I'm so glad uh, that we get to dive into so many things. Um, before we get too far in, Sean, we always start with people introducing themselves, kind of answering that very typical question of, you know, what do you do? How do you describe what you do? So would you mind starting there with us? Yeah, no problem. Uh, you know, a lot of times I tell people, you know what, I'm a high school assistant principal and they get this like look on their face. And and I don't know exactly what the look is, but if I had to describe it, it, it would be like, well, Why? Like, why would you do that? Uh, did you like lose a bet or is it punishment for something you like 
sign up to be, you know, around teenagers all day long and, and, uh, you know, do discipline and all that stuff. And, and, uh, it honestly is, um, it suits me perfectly. It's, it's, uh, it, it honestly is, uh, what I was meant to do. I really feel like I'm having an impact. So if, if somebody said like, what do you do? Um, I guess the best way that I can kind of describe it is that I, I'm a connector. Um, I try to connect people to other people and people to resources and, and teachers and students to different ideas and parents to, to the, the people that they need and trying to connect myself to the people that make me better. Um, because I really feel like any kind of school community uh, that really wants to be affirming and validating um, really has to take the role of connecting people together pretty seriously. And, uh, and we, were, we believe at Fairbo High School, at least, that if there is a student struggling, uh, whether it's academically or socially or emotionally or mentally, that it is our responsibility. It's no one else's. It's ours to connect them with somebody who can help. And, and our school district is very diverse, very racially diverse, uh, ethnically diverse, very socioeconomically diverse. And so we really feel like it's very important that you know, people are not strangers to one another within our school uh, and, and even beyond the walls of the school within our community. We want people to know one another because I think that when you break down those walls and you, you can see the good in somebody, it truly opens the door to like true empathy, to be able to, to feel what other people are feeling. And, and uh, that's just so vital in, in all schools, but I think that ours is, um, is unique. And we're just constantly trying to build that culture of empathy and love and respect. Um, and it's not easy, but, but it is you know, super important. And, and I guess that at my role as, as assistant principal, at first glance, you might say, oh, well, you probably, you know, observe teachers and you probably do a bunch of discipline and like, you know, that kind of nuts and bolts type stuff. But really, I feel like it's, it's a lot bigger than that. It's about trying to create a culture and, and a, a setting where every single person can thrive and just kind of grow into the greatness that's within them. I love I love that you see your job that way and that you see your role that way as a connector, as someone who uh, you know, is trying to build not just not bring not just the school, but also the entire community together. I think that's a great way to look at it. I love it. Uh, let's talk uh, let's talk failure for a minute. Well, you know, one of the things we talk about a lot on this podcast is failure. I always say that I'm I've been fortunate enough to fail a lot because every one of those little failures and big fail, failures have led me to where I am today. So can you tell us a story about a time you've had a failure? Tell us what happened. How did you overcome that? And then what did you take away from that experience? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm glad that I'm, I'm super glad that you asked that question because I think sometimes, you know, at least when I listen to podcasts, the, um, the notion is that that person somehow magically must have it all sort of figured out. And for anybody listening out there, uh, please know that that is not true of the person you're currently listening to. Um, you know, I, I failed many, many times. And actually, I find that to be one of my strengths in leadership is I'm not afraid to fail, uh, even when people are watching. Um, and I guess if I had to, to kind of talk about one that, that really made a difference in my career, when I first started as an AP, um, you know, I had seen the shows and I had gone through school and I'd gone, um, you know, I, I had kind of seen and I, I had this idea in my mind of what an assistant principal was supposed to do every day. And I role played that for about the first year. And I knew relationships mattered and I wanted to lead with love. But I also was in, in reflecting on that experience, very transactional in my relationships with people. Um, if a student, you know, did something wrong or whatever that needed to be corrected, I would look in the, the book at the discipline book and I would put my finger on what the consequence should be. And I'd say, okay, you did the, the crime, so to speak. This is what your consequence is. And, you know, I, I kind of took myself as a leader and as a decision maker and as an ethical person, um, given the authority to make good decisions for people for their best interests, I kind of took that out of the equation and I just sort of just made transactions. And um, it kind of came to a head. I had a student, uh, I won't uh, say his name, but he was somebody that I butted heads with. Uh, I kind of found him to be a little bit disrespectful. And we kind of went back and forth a little bit. And he would get consequences for his behavior and all that. And, and, and one day I brought him into my office and I just decided, you know what, we're just going to get to the bottom of this. Uh, we're going to figure this out. We're going to figure out what's going on. Um, I knew that he was picking up on signs from me that I didn't like him. Um, 
because I, honestly, I was giving off those signs. Um, and, and he had every reason to think that. And so in this conversation, we're talking, we're talking. And at one point, and, and literally over an hour had gone by that we just continued to talk and talk. And it, you know, it, it just kept going and going. And at one point, his head is down. And I can see tears starting to roll down his face. And he looks up and he says, my mom is sick and I'm afraid she's going to die. He said, it has nothing to do with you. And at that point, we stood up, we hugged in the middle of my office. It was only him and me. And at that moment, I, I kind of learned a very valuable lesson that a lot of the behaviors and whatever, it doesn't, you can't take it personally, like it has nothing to do with you. And, and that kind of that transactional nature of, of dealing with kids, like it's got to go. Uh, and from that moment forward, I really tried to be a lot more transformative. And to say like, you did this, you know, you got in a fight or you skipped class or whatever the case may be, but let's talk about what's going on in your life. So that we can actually, you know, not just, you know, give you a consequence, check it off the list and, uh, and move on, but rather actually give you the, the help that you need to deal with something that's going on in your life. You know, I had another student that, you know, he would skip class, he would skip class, he would skip class and, and I would chase him all over the building and, and, you know, it was tense and whatever. And one day I, I just walked up to him in the middle of the hallway and I gave him a hug and I said, I'm, I'm done fighting with you, man. I love you. I see greatness within you. I want to see you succeed. I want to help you, but let's not fight anymore. Let's just, let's just be on the same team. He left that conversation from the hallway and went to a science class for like the first time in two weeks, you know? And so it was, it was these failures that allowed me to come to this realization that I can be transformational, that I don't have to be somebody that I'm not. I can do it how I want to do it. And I want to lead with love. And, and kids will respond from that. And honestly, if I wouldn't have ever had those initial failures and felt just like a, like a speck of dust when, he, when that kid looked up at me and told me that his mom was sick, I mean, that was a gut punch when I reflected on how I was treating him. And then he had that going on outside of school. I felt like a zero, you know what I mean? And, and to have that failure um, just boom, right in your face like that. I had to do some soul searching and really overcome that and learn from it and then vow to, you know, never really let that happen again. Wow. Two, I mean, powerful stories there, Sean, uh, of just that reflection and understanding that it's not, it's not personal. It's not about you. There's something else going on and time to look for that. And I love your, your process of not looking at it as transactional, but actually digging into what's going on and trying to help. So, uh, really appreciate you sharing that. Let's let's flip it around now. Let's talk about a successful moment you've had. This can be something big or something small, but tell us what happened. Why was it a, a success for you? And then what did you take away from that experience? Yeah, um, I've been fortunate. I've I've had some successes. One one story that pops into my mind. I'm I I'm so focused in on students that there, we had a young lady one day who one of my favorite kids. You know, you're not supposed to have favorites. We all know that, but everybody listening here right now has. A couple of those students that they just have a super soft spot for and and this young lady was one of mine and one day she's walking down the hall it's the end of the day and she she makes a decision to um you know uh smart off to a teacher and actually swear at that teacher use some very foul language at them and the and she got brought into my office and and uh, she was having a terrible day and she's crying and and uh, she actually confided in me that day that what difference does it make uh, what I do or, or what I say to people, because I don't, I don't see myself living past, you know, this year, you know, which was her way of telling me that she was contemplating suicide at that time. And um, it made no sense to me. This is somebody that everybody who met her knew that she was amazing, knew that she was special. She was different. She was smart. She was talented. She was destined for great things. But she confided in me that, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter what I do because, um, you know, I've got plans to end my life. And and uh, I was able to kind of sit with her for many, many hours that night, contact family, get her connected to the to the proper resources um, and then stayed connected with her, you know, all the time. She actually transitioned out to our, our ALC and uh, still stayed in touch with her. And uh, she just graduated this year. And, um, you know, graduation looked a little bit different and, um, um, 
you know, it was uh, not not the normal ceremony, but but uh, she got to walk across the stage. And I'll tell you what, being a part of that and seeing that, knowing where she had come from and seeing that that she had crossed that off the list and that she was in a much better spot and that I had maybe had a, a, a small role in that was pretty special. Um, and so I think about it on like a micro level when we're talking about specific kids. But then I also think about one recent success that I had, which was, um, you know, I'm very invested in doing equity work and, and trying to make sure that we're improving outcomes for, for all students, black and brown students, students living in poverty. Uh, we have a ways to go at my site, but we're actually in the process now of um, partnering with, with community partners, nonprofits and organizations within our town that are all funding um, a program that we're calling the RISE program. RISE stands for Realizing Individual Student Excellence. It's in there, we just have to realize it. And so we're embedding mentors right within the school to, to help these students overcome barriers that they might have in their lives, to give them academic support, to give them social and emotional support. And these mentors will be in the schools every single day. Um, and it's this big community partnership that we're we're uh, trying to uh, take hold of and, and uh, embrace within our school. Uh, we actually just hired our first two coordinators for that this week. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's like real. We've been working on it for over a year. Uh, and it started out with just like conversations and, and what can we do to support these students a little bit better. And, and our numbers and our data are showing that we have to do something. And now we're right on the precipice of being able to like go and have these students do home. Uh, sorry, have these coordinators do home visits have them you know, do whatever these students need to get them across the finish line of graduation and have them you know, college and career ready so that they can attack uh, life after high school with gusto. So I've been uh, very thankful and, and uh, blessed to, to be a part of some big time success stories. And, uh, and those are just a couple. Oh, Sean, I loved all of those stories. That was so impactful and so important. I love that you shared all of that. You know, I, I know there's a lot that you do. You've shared, you know, some fabulous stories and, and I know we're going to get to more, but with everything that you've done, we always like to ask about what fuels people's fire when they're a guest on the Teach Bear Talk podcast, right? Like what's really exciting you right now about education? Do you have something that really sticks out as something that's really um, exciting you right now about what you're doing? Uh, yeah, it, it's a tough time to be in education right now, honestly. You know, we're, we're worried, we're scared for ourselves and our families. We're scared for our kids that, uh, you know, people could get sick or, or, you know, that they could fall behind in their learning. And so there is some anxiety, but, but people like me that are, you know, I, I'm a leader, but first and foremost, I'm a teacher and a learner. And the conversations that I've been in since March are the, the best conversations around what education should look like since I have been in education, which is going on 20 years now. I mean, we are talking about what schools should look like at a level that we have never talked about it before. I'll, I'll give you one example. You know, it was about, you know, we were winding down to one of the most stressful school years that any of us had ever been a part of. And, you know, I'm from Minnesota and we live very close to Minneapolis. And when George Floyd was killed, you know, there was this this, uh, you know, that happened right in our backyard and it hit us hard. You know, we're a very diverse uh, community. Um, our students were very shaken up. Our teachers were as well. And this is on top of the whole COVID thing. And we were just getting ready to like pull the plug on a very stressful school year. And we had a staff meeting and we kind of uh, came all kind of together, came to the realization that the March for Social Justice and the March to Improve Our Schools, you know, the inequities that we had seen through distance learning, you couldn't ignore them. I mean, they were staring you in the face. And then to have that happen in Minneapolis on top of it, it was like, we can't just go away and pretend like that didn't happen. And so there was a group of us who said, you know what, let's continue to do the work over the summer. We have over 50 teachers at our site, 50. And, and we're not a huge high school. We probably, probably only have 70 teachers. The vast majority of them said, yeah, we want to do a book study to examine our grading practices because we are really noticing some inequities when we have to grade kids in distance learning. The old model of 90, 80, 70, 60, A, B, C, D, F that was used, you know, like in the industrial rev revolution to sort kids into categories. 
why are we still doing that? And so we picked up a book and, and we're doing book talks every week. We're reading a couple chapters at a time and then checking in online. And so teachers are super engaged with with disrupting systems that have been around for like a hundred years. You know, we're looking at teaching practices and, and best practices for online and, and how do you support kids and do RTI and intervention in an in a online or in a hybrid mode. I mean, we have never had those conversations at this level before. So it, it's, it stinks, right? Because the reality of the situation is that, um, you know, something bad is happening. There's a global pandemic and obviously that's a bad thing. I don't mean to say that it's not. But if there ever was a silver lining in the whole thing, it's that teachers at our site and really, I think, all over the country are are noticing that the way that we're doing things uh, in many ways need to be changed because the discrepancies that we're seeing in achievement and access and opportunities specifically for black and brown kids and those living in poverty, those gaps, they've been there for a long time. And our inability to really take them uh, um, you know, seriously enough to do something about it and to get rid of them. Um, you know, it, it's been lackluster. And so nothing really has, has happened at least to the point where those gaps have been eliminated. And so, um, I I'm hopeful, you know, you ask what gets me excited, you know, that gets me excited that, that people are willing to say, let's disrupt things. Let's do things different. Let's learn, 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 and then apply that learning to make our schools the best they can possibly be. And, and to impact kids' lives so that they can realize the greatness that's within them and just go and do amazing things with their lives. Um, you know, teachers were always doing that. Of course they were. But the sense of urgency that they have right now and, and that I have along with them, I, I don't think I've ever experienced that uh, in my 20 or so years of education. Oh, I love that. Best answer. I love this idea of I love that people are frustrated, so we're creating change. Oh, powerful. So important. Um, you're going to kill this question too, I'm sure. But this one makes me nervous every single time, especially talking to an administrator because one piece of advice is really hard. And question five always asks our guests to share one piece of advice, one piece of advice to any educator, whether they're brand new in the classroom or a veteran teacher what should every teacher be keeping in mind to facilitate that that progressive classroom? What's your piece of advice you'd like to share? Well, Ray, this is going to be super profound here. So buckle up. Here it comes. Ooh, you ready I'm for so, it? I feel like it should be a drum roll. Jeff, can you get yeah, a drum roll yeah. in here? Come on. This, this is going to be the least uh, like like <laughs> big idea in the history. But my advice is pretty simple. Uh, you have to love kids. Mm. And, and, and if you don't, just you know, like it's not going to work. No hard feelings. But it, if you really don't love the kids sitting in front of you, um, it it just isn't going to work out. You know what I mean? And you have to repeatedly show them that you care, especially the tough kids. Um, you know, a lot of those kids have been, you know, shown that they're not cared for in schools numerous times. And so their guard is up and and you got to love your way through that. Um, you have to show them that you're genuinely interested in who they are and what they're into. You got to ask them questions. You got to recognize the goodness that's in them because let, let's just be very, very clear. There is goodness in every single kid, period. No doubt about it. Um, some of them hide it, you know what I mean? And they, they try to not let you see it, but there is goodness in every kid. And when you point it out to them and you name it, and you affirm it and you validate it and you say, you know what, I, I, I love having you in my class because you you have such a great sense of humor. You always make me laugh. I don't know what my day would be like if you weren't here. A, a kid hearing you say that um, means the world to them. And so, um, you know, we have to be very liberal with with the way that we express praise and love towards our kids. Um, I can remember being a teenager and I was probably more confused and insecure than than anybody. But I think that a lot of people go through that. And I think that as grownups, we've forgotten how insecure and confused we were just trying to figure out who the heck am I? Do I hang with this crew? Do I let people know about the strength that I have? Do I let people know about this interest? Oh, my gosh, what are they going to say about me if they know? And and it's our job to to help them discover that greatness that's within them. And so you have to call it out. You have to name it. 
uh, because a lot of times you can see that greatness in a kid before they can even see it in themselves. And if you are the teacher that names that greatness, you know, you're a, you're an amazing writer. Has anybody ever told you that before? Like if you are the teacher that says that to a kid, they're going to remember you forever. You know, you will have achieved teacher immortality because you will be remembered forever as, as being a difference maker in that kid's life. I can still remember the teacher in fifth grade that hung a basketball above my desk because I had earned one A. It was the first A I had ever earned in fifth grade. And he took a basketball, he took a big A on it. And from that point on, I was an A student. He had named it. He had called me that. And so I was, I was that. Um, I can remember the coaches that I had that, that just, I didn't know if I was any good or not. They told me I was. And so I said, huh, okay, I guess I am. Um, and so my advice to, to new teachers is I know you're worried about content. I know you're worried about not knowing enough. I know you're worried about lesson plan design. I, all of that is super valid. You know, you got to be good at that too. But, but none of that is really going to matter if you don't um, care about kids and show them that you care about them by pointing out all the great things they have going on in, in their lives. Wow, that's powerful. I love that. Achieving teacher immortality and that you have to love kids. I think that's so important. We can't say it enough. So great advice there, man. Great advice. It's not, it's not exactly profound. I mean, I, many, many have said it. You know, of course, you got to care about kids. Um, it, it's just so simple but a lot of times it, it gets lost in the shuffle you know it gets uh maybe brushed off when we we start talking about all the stuff that a first or second year teacher has to be good at and do i mean it is so overwhelming um that sometimes you know teachers forget like oh yeah let's boil it down to the basics and just really show these kids that i'm here for them that i won't abandon them i think it's perceived simplicity is what makes it so profound honestly I think that's that's the key to that. So that's right. awesome. I love it. All right, man, let's have some fun. We're going to do these next six questions. I'm going to throw them at you. Your goal is to answer each one in 15 seconds or less. Let's now, do I do not want to put any pressure on you, but your boy Joe Sage knocked this one out of the park. Yeah. So yeah. I know you like to call yourself assistant principal number one, but <laughs> we're going to yeah. find out right now. He's a tough act to follow. Mr. Sage, is, uh, <laughs> he, he's a good dude. He's one of my best friends and amazing AP. Hey, Jeff, right. didn't you call him Mr. Sage just to confirm? Sage, that's his fancy back? name. Yes. Yeah, it's Joe Sage. Yeah, that doesn't very, surprise me. It's very cool. Uh, <laughs> all right, here we go. <laughs> what is one ed tech tool you cannot live without? Uh, all things Google. Google Hangout, Google Docs, Google Calendar, Google Form. You know, I'm uh, I'm all in with the Google, Google suite, man. Uh, give us a book you're reading right now. I got a few going. Uh, number one, I mentioned the book study that uh, we're doing with our teachers. So Grading for Equity, which is by Joe Feldman. Great book. I highly recommend it. You know, grading is something that doesn't get a lot of uh, attention um, in, in teacher training programs. So check that one out. Uh, I'm also reading a book by Jason Reynolds called When I Was the Greatest. Great uh, young adult author there, Jason Reynolds. And then on audiobook, I'm checking out uh, Malcolm Gladwell's latest uh, book called Talking to Strangers. Uh, who do we need to follow on social media today? Uh, lots of good ones. I'm mostly on Twitter. Um, and so my rec recommendations will come from there. Let's go with uh, Dr. Sheldon Akins, who runs the Leading Equity Center. That's uh, uh, yeah, great dude. He comes out with amazing stuff. I highly recommend his podcast and, uh, and uh, hit great follow on Twitter. I also am a huge fan of uh, Amy Fast, who's a principal out in Oregon. She puts out great stuff on Twitter as well. And then, you know, I got to shout out my boy. He's, he's my, you know, my best friend. I work alongside him every day. Uh, Joe, Joe Sage. Um, you got to check him out on Twitter. He's putting out great content as well. Uh, what's a good YouTube channel or website for educators? You know, I find myself going to tolerance.org a lot. I put out, uh, you know, weekly resources for our teachers in our buildings and I kind of comb social media and the, and the internet for stuff. And tolerance.org is great for, teachers and leaders that want to be more equitable and, and creating anti-racist schools. I'd, I'd also give a plug out to cultofpedagogy.com. Uh, Jennifer Gonzalez runs a great website there. They've got amazing resources for teachers and, and most all of them are free. Uh, give us a daily, weekly, or monthly routine every teacher should get into. Uh, daily has got to be gratitude. Uh, look for things in your day to be grateful for and share that gratitude with others. You know, say thank you a hundred times every day. Thank you notes on, 
on desks, stuff like that. You got to do the gratitude every day. Uh, weekly, I'd say communicate with parents. M now more than ever, they are part of our team. We got to make sure that their voices are heard and amplified. Um, you know, positive phone calls work like a charm. If you're not doing them, work that into your weekly routine, uh, positive phone calls all the way. And then monthly, I would say for all teachers listening, it's super scary, but monthly, uh, um, I would go with the feedback from kids. Could be a survey, could be a lunch focus group, invite 10 kids into your room for lunch one time per month and, and ask them for honest feedback on your teaching. You know, like I said, super scary, but could also um, make a huge difference in your teaching. And what is the best piece of advice you've ever received? Uh, the best piece of advice I'm sure came from my dad at some point in time. Um, but I'll actually share a piece of advice that came from one of my mentors when I was transitioning from the classroom to admin. And he said, you will be a great principal if you never forget what it was like to be a teacher. And I've tried to live up to that, uh, that advice ever since. Ooh, so good. That's, isn't, that, isn't that good advice? That's really good advice. Oh, such good advice. That might be trophy worthy, Jeff. I was going to say, what do you, what do you think, Ray? Did, did he, did he beat Joe? I think he had, I mean, come on with that best piece of advice. How do you, how do you top that? Yeah, well, AP number one. There AP is. one, AP, AP one. one. Sorry, Joe. <laughs> no, I know Mr. Sage is listening. I know you're listening, Joe. You heard Jeff and Ray say AP have, one. Now, you heard it. Now, I will I will switch that around, and Joe will get AP one if Joe publicly declares hashtag Team Jeff. So Joe, <laughs> no. your way back. And Sean came into a full fledged Team Ray. So yeah. Joe, I need you yeah. on my side. I can make I can make things yeah. change. Well, Joe, Joe, you can't you can't be bought, buddy. You can't be bought. Come on. I, I can be bought, yes. I didn't <laughs> I didn't actually know there were people on Team Jeff. You know, I figured it was it was Come on now. Ah, uh, Jeff, you know I'm just playing, brother. You know I'm just playing. Oh my god, it's the best. Oh. Sean, you do know that Jeff's wife, Amy, has a team ray shirt, so Oh my does. goodness. Yeah. Here's the best part about that is I bought it for her. <laughs> So well, that is so good. You know, Jeff, Jeff and I got a chance to talk. Uh, I don't know. When was it? About a month ago. And uh, he challenged me to run a marathon. I don't know if you remember that, Jeff, but I had told you that that was on my list of things to do. And, uh, you know, we're getting after it. We're trying. We're trying. I'm yeah. Doing... Where are you? Are you training right now? Uh, doing doing a little bit. I'm actually doing more biking than I am running. Just okay. trying to keep the body in order a little bit. Biking's I was good. I was pounding. Okay. I I, um, you know, like a lot of your listeners, I'm a big fan of Brene Brown. And, and uh, after we had talked, uh, I had read something that she had put in Daring Greatly uh, that that uh, don't let good be the enemy of perfect. And so, you know, I, that made a lot of sense to me that here I have in my mind this notion that I have to do this, this marathon. And I got to run X number of miles a day. And if I don't get a certain time, you know, what am I going to do? And that really helped me reflect and say, listen, man, you're 41 years old. You know, you're not training for any like Iron Man. You know, your competitive days are long gone. You know, just be fit, just be healthy, just just make sure that your heart's good enough to live a long and happy life, so you can be there for your family. You know, that made a lot of sense to me. The pursuit of it is actually way more than, way more important than the actual completion of it. Yeah, it no took doubt. me uh, just shy of eight months longer than my goal in order to get to it. I finally hit my marathon like three weeks ago, three, four weeks ago. Oh, nice! Congrats, so, man. Huge. Thank you. Yeah. So, I mean, it took a long time. So it's, it, but again, the, the journey of trying to get there is, is worth it because of the, the fact that you're, even if you're not anywhere close to hitting that goal, you're, you're better every day, right? You're improving Absolutely. every day. You get now, you're getting on the bike or running or whatever it might be. So that's, that's what awesome. That's about. Yeah. Awesome to hear yeah. that. Sean, we'll get you next into yoga. This will be good. We'll have this yeah. whole, this oh, whole mission. Boy. This is a good thing. Oh boy. I could use it. <laughs> I could use it, man. <laughs> That's so awesome. Well, before we go, Sean, I'm sorry. I literally, I know we could talk for hours because you're such an amazing educator. We love being connected to you. And this is really only the beginning of the things you're doing and hopefully the things that we can partner and do together. But I want to make sure our listeners stay connected with you specifically. So how can they hunt down uh, your information and, and stay connected with your content? Yeah, the best way is through Twitter. Um, I am on Facebook too, but you're just going to get pictures of my kids and stuff like that. So I, I, I wouldn't probably go that route. So I'm at uh, Sean Peck 6, S-H-A-W-N-P-E-C-K 6 on Twitter. 
And, um, you know, you can DM me that way. And, and certainly we could exchange emails and, and stuff like that. But I'm on Twitter most days. Um, you know, there also is a podcast in the works. You know, we've been ex- inspired by Ray and Jeff. And uh, we've talked about Mr. Sage quite a bit um, already. But we're, we've got a podcast in the works. We, we notice that when we talk, uh, usually the conversation gets elevated a little bit and a lot of people kind of turn their heads and, and start to listen to what we have to say. And, and so we thought, well, why don't we, why don't we try to record some of those conversations and, and put it out there for the interweb to, to uh, listen to or not listen to. And so um, I would expect that to, to be up and running here within the next couple of weeks as well. Oh, I love it. That's exciting. And you know, you can find all the links and all the resources and everything we talked about in this episode over at teachbetter.com, as well as the links for connecting with Sean to keep the conversation going. So make sure you head over to teachbetter.com for the show notes for all of that. Be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming episodes. And if you can give us a rating and review, we'd really appreciate that as well. And let's keep taking this one step further. Think of just three of your colleagues who need to hear these amazing stories and connect with these amazing educators and share this podcast with them. Sean, this was awesome, man. Truly appreciate your stories, everything you shared with us, uh, and just giving us some time and hanging out with us, man. Thank you. Pleasure's all mine. I, I love it. Love talking, teaching, and learning. Love talking about impacting kids and, uh, and really appreciate the opportunity. Until next time, let's get out there and let's teach better.